Yeah, well, the, the, the discipline that I've got myself interested in in the last few years is sclerochronology. It's a field that is allied to dendrochronology, which is uh, the study of rings, the rings within trees. Here we go. Here is a cross section of a tree and you can see that there's a number of light and dark bands and uh, they actually get narrower as you go across uh, the tree there. And sclerochronology is essentially the same thing but applied to uh, the equi to equivalent tissues in animals, hard tissues in animals, of which there are various kinds. The kind that I work on uh, is shell material, uh, which you'll be very familiar with, the sort of stuff uh, that, um, well, shells that you find on the beach. Yeah. This is uh, a modern example of uh, the kind of shell that I'm working on. This is a thing known as the queen scallop or Aquipectina percularis, to give it its Latin name. And you I can think I'll stick with Queen Scallop. Stick with the Queen Scallop, <laughs> okay. That's a modern one, okay. Yep. Here now is one that's a couple of thousand years old. This has been dredged up from the floor of the North Sea and it's been carbon dated. You can see there's a bit of it missing here and that little bit there has been taken away and it's been actually sent to Arizona to a laboratory where the carbon in the shell was used to derive an absolute date. And you can see actually also on this one that there are some, there's a whole series of white marks here which are actually grooves on the shell. And those are places where samples have been taken to analyze the oxygen isotopic composition of the shell. Uh, that shell is made of calcium carbonate the carbon can be used for the carbon dating. The oxygen can be used um, particularly to work out the temperature at which the, the shell material actually was formed. And with very, very tiny samples, a matter of micrograms, uh, we feed that material into a mass spectrometer, a machine that can measure the ratio of oxygen 18 to 16 isotopes. And uh, you can do that throughout the growth of the shell. And so you can get a record of the change in the oxygen isotopic composition of the shell throughout its growth. And uh, what we can also do, as well as look at the record of oxygen isotopic composition through the shell, we can also look at the pattern of growth increments. And this is really the most similar thing to dendrochronology. Uh, we can look at the pattern of growth increments and they can provide information just straightforward information about the age of the shell, but they too encapsulate environmental information which we can use in conjunction with the, um, with the oxygen isotopic evidence uh, of temperature. The, let's have a look. Well, here we go. Here's one. Uh, this is a rather older shell here. It's a slightly broken one, but I think you can still see it's a, it's a shell of, and it is indeed the same species. This is about three million years old now. Uh, this is from a period known as the Pliocene and these are the ones we are particularly interested in and you can see that there's a fairly major ring there okay um, which will be akin to the annual growth ring in a tree. Here is um, an example of not in fact the same shell but it's a, it is a shell from several million years ago and there is a close-up of that shell and as you can see, there's, a, there's these beautiful growth increments preserved and they, are, they represent in the order of a day. OK, so that's you're looking at days within the Pliocene period three million years ago there.